Hello, everyone, and welcome to Refresh. It's a time to connect, to be inspired, to learn something new, and ultimately feel a bit better about ourselves in this time that we get to spend to, uh, together. And you should thank yourselves for making this time that, that we do spend. Um, this is a great time. We're back after a lovely summer break. I hope all of you had a really lovely uh, summer vacation, have some memories to reflect on, but I don't know about you, but September for me has always felt like the beginning of a new year. The pattern was consistent and familiar. You know, you loll into the last weeks of August and then the Labor Day weekend was the clarion call to go back to school, back to schedules, back to friends, classes, and practices. Now, of course, if you live in Florida or have lived in Florida, like my husband, you did not have this experience. School starts in early August now, which, by the way, um, it creates such a dissonance in my whole beating. It's like out of cadence, the sensation that the world is not in the right order. Still, it's amazing after all of these years. And it made me think about life's rhythms, how we've grown up. How, how we've grown up influences how we view the world and how we experience the world. And here I am someone who truly think is very open to change. And yet the schedule of summer to school is so routinized in my somatic being and thinking. I still struggle with the different schedule um, my community here is very accustomed to. So I'm going to ask you, how about you? You ever stop and think about the things we hold on to? or the experiences that are still so present and fresh in our mind, even though they are very much buried in our past. As I thought about this, I thought, wow, we couldn't have had a better timing to have a visit with the great Cynthia James. It couldn't be more fortuitous, right? Cynthia is a woman who does, who asks, does my voice matter? She is a transformational leader whose wisdom speaks to us about our power to transform. Her, her main stage presence at Generation W, I don't know how many of you were there to see it, either virtually or live in person, was mesmerizing. Um, I have to just say it was so impactful, and I'm so glad that she is now not only a mainstay presence on our stage, but a mainstay presence in our lives. From abuse to accomplished actress, from scarcity to international songstress, from welfare to the White House, and from victim thinking to victorious living. Cynthia James embodies the quote, I am not what I have done, I am what I have become, which I think is probably inspirational to all of us. She's an author of three books, which we'll talk about, and she uses her voice to inspire others to live fully expressed lives. All right, so enough of me talking about you, Cynthia. Let me just say welcome, because it's so much better to talk with you and to hear from you. Thank you for kicking off the new season of Refresh. I am so happy to be here. I loved being at Gen W and I'm grateful to be a part of your community. Oh, of course. I mean, you are like, you embody the community and I know that you have help. Okay. Dogs. Dogs. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got it. I... Tiger Lily, come here. Tiger. All right, how about that? Um, I got two upstairs and I'm hoping they don't go crazy. <laughs> you mentioned moving from scarcity to becoming an international songstress. Like that's mm -hmm. one great line. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about your story because it is really a remarkable and inspirational one. Well, I grew up in Minnesota and I actually come from five generations of women who've been abused and traumatized and so survival was always the major focus and my mother was beautiful and talented and had no self-worth or self-esteem because she had been abused and so we were on welfare we were standing in welfare lines we moved all the time and um uh there was a part of me that thought you know i don't i don't think this is supposed to be my life and my family used to say, get your feet on the ground because this is your life. But I sang. And even though I was a little um, intimidated, because at that time it was Aretha Franklin and Gladys Knight and the Pips and all these people, and I wasn't any of those people, 
but people liked my voice. And so I felt like that was a way for me to transform and heal. And so that began my journey. And over time, you know, I was an open act for Rich Little and Jay Leno and Harris. And, and I, I recorded a, a lot of CDs and, um, and I've written a lot of music. And when you couldn't have told me when I was really, really young that this would be my life, but I did have the feeling that I was going to be on stages. And I used to do these um, shows for my cousins and, and they would say, and I would say, ooh, and I'm gonna be the next Nancy Wilson. And for some of the younger people looking like who is Nancy Wilson, right? But anyway, she was a great jazz singer and everybody kind of poo-pooed it. But I guess one of the things I, I tell everybody is don't listen to what other people say, listen to your heart. Yeah, you know, and I'm and I'm glad that you said that, and I'm not sure why this person's face is on our uh, is on is on our screen, but it is. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome everybody. Welcome all our friends from Facebook. I just want to let you know this is a conversation we're having with the amazing Cynthia James. If you have any questions along the way, you can post it in Facebook as well, and it will get back to us, and we'll make sure that we engage you in this really wonderful opportunity to speak with Cynthia. So here's what I heard: you grow up in a very challenging environment. Your family clearly recognizes it. You think you can be somewhere else. What gives you the strength? I think all of us feel pulled, right? You say, don't listen. Don't listen sounds easy. What, what gave you the strength? What, and how, where, where do we pull from to be able to change those circumstances that put us in a situation where we don't think we should be? You know, without sounding airy-fairy, I feel like there was some part of me connected to the universe, to, to spirit. And I, I feel like angels were surrounding me. And I felt like, like my intuition, my inner knowing was talking to me beyond my circumstances. And so I would, I would have dreams or I would, I would, I would hear a thought that was that was the antithesis of what I was living. And I would start to make choices and take risks that everybody thought was crazy. But I feel like today I was being guided on some level, even though I wasn't conscious of what was happening. But as you did that, right? Mm -hmm. And the more you tried to pull away, did you feel the people around you try to want to keep you bring you back down? Oh, hundred percent. There's this old book called The Dance of Anger. And it's like you change the dance and then everybody wants to pull you back into the old dance. And so I, yeah, I, I feel like they wanted to tell me to stop being arrogant and they wanted to tell me to stop, you know, being so in fantasy and illusion. And I kept thinking, well, if there are some people that can live this life, how come I can't be one of those people? And, and I was told because you're on welfare, because you have no money, because, because um, um, you are destined to be in this environment that's challenging. I grew up in Minneapolis, literally like blocks away from where George Floyd died. And so all the craziness that was going on then, you know, um, was a part of our reality. And so, so people of color just thought, well, this is what we're doomed to live. Right. And okay, we're, but you didn't think that. No, no. And I, the only thing I can say is that I think, you know, we come on this planet with, um, I'm, I'm going to call it gifts and talents and wisdom. We come with it. And I think though, a lot of our environments kind of pull us away from that, that field of possibility thinking. But for some reason, it was who I came to be. And it was, I stayed there and I fought for it, even though there was all kinds of stuff around me saying, this will never happen. Yeah, and it did happen, didn't it? Ty, I, you, you have a great story. I mean, you have many. Pick one of the ones that you, that as you look back now, say, I can't believe this happened, but it really happened. Yeah, so there was this show, show many years ago called Star Search, and it was kind of like the first American Idol kind of show, right? And they had all these different categories, singers, dancers, actors, and you competed for $100,000 throughout the year. 
And so I tried for one year and I didn't get in. I tried for another year and I didn't get in. The third year, someone came to see me in an acting uh, showcase and recommended me. So then I get on Star Search and I win seven times in a row. What? And seven I did. Times? Yeah. Okay. And they gave you $2,000 every time you won. And so they said, well, now you've won seven. So you are now going to be in the semifinals. And so I am, I, you know, when I lose, I compete against, oh my gosh, it was like the girl next door, beautiful, smart, sexy, and I'm thinking, oh, wow. So anyway, I get to the semifinals and I win. And then I get to the finals and I'm up against the same woman. Oh, and, wow. and what you do is, you know, you rehearse. So I hired a coach and I was having them work with me on my scenes and stuff. Cause I mean, you're up there for a very short period of time. And I got up to do my rehearsal. The producer never talked to any of us. And I sat down and he comes and sits down next to me. And he says, how you doing? I'm like, fine. He goes, how you think that went? I said, oh, great. He said, why do you think you won so many times? And I said, oh, because I, you know, I'm a good actress and I study. And, and he said, yeah, but that's not why you won. You won because in every character I saw you and I didn't see her today. And I was like, oh my gosh, is he sabotaged me? What's, what's happening here? And so I went back to my dressing room and, and the girl singer was having her own issues. So we decided to just center and do a blessing for each other. And my, and my blessing request was that I show up authentic on that stage and that I bring me. And so I went out there and, and that's what I did. And, um, and I won. They handed me $100,000 on TV, Ed McMahon, and I bought my first house. But it was such a lesson that was like, all you have to do is be you. Be the most authentic, powerful, dynamic you because you're unique. There's no one else like you. And so just bring the best of yourself. You um, have taken on the role of being a transformational coach. And I think all of us here are always interested in personal change, what that means, how we approach it, how we could, you know, be better, different. I don't want to say more because there's such a movement behind telling us that we're enough, but how did you come to that? Well, you know, I feel like we live in an evolutionary universe and therefore we must be evolutionary. So we have the opportunity in every given moment to open to new possibilities and new potentials. And so for me, I love being with my clients and some I do some leaders and I do some teams as well. And it's like, where do we where do we want to be? What's the vision? Because vision pulled, right? What's the vision? And then what is working for us right now to get there? And then what's in the way? And let's start um, disconnecting those cords of what's in the way so that we can open to more possibilities and and open to, you know, I mean, I, you know, I wasn't with you when Jen W was an idea, but you kept opening and people kept coming and sponsors kept coming because you were in the mindset of creating transformation for people and opportunities for people. And I think we can do that individually, collectively, and in organizations. And so how, how are you doing that now? Oh, before you, add, you answer that question, I guess I wanted, what are you seeing and hearing in this evolutionary world we're in working with your groups now? Is there a different message coming from what we are saying as a population in terms of how we are feeling living in this very fast changing world? People are concerned. They're concerned about our, I'm gonna call it lack of humanity, uh, about the division that's going on, not just in our country, but around the world. and and the adversity and 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 people are concerned about their mental health because they're not functioning at the levels that that they were before and so what i do with my clients is like 
we we come up with techniques and things to help them stay in their center to to bring their authentic voice to be innovative and to be curious and and to be one of the reasons i take people on trips around the world is because i want people to meet people from different cultures and ways of life because when we talk when we meet each other then all those barriers start to fall down and we start to understand that we all want to be loved we all want to be seen we all want to be heard we all want our children to be safe we all you know we all want the same things at the core and so when people start meeting each other and understanding each other then the result has to be a loving space yes right well totally agree i mean that's part of the reason we created refresh refresh obviously this world this word was about people coming together to kind of refresh their spirit which really does come from being with people who come with grace and openness and interesting stories and it allows us to elevate ourselves and walk out feeling a little bit better because listen the world can kind of crush us right every single day there's always things that we can't control that impact us and we always know that we should worry about what we can control. You speak, though, very um, much more than in most people that I hear, at least openly, about spirituality. And, you know, that it's interesting because there are people saying, what? what? And then there are other people saying, yes, give me more. Tell me where that comes from. Well, you know, when I say spirituality, I'm not talking about religion because different religions have different tenets and different ways of right. being. Right. But I feel like we're all spiritual beings. You know, we're all, um, we all have um, energy and I'm going right. to call it light within us that makes us unique and powerful. And so for me, it's like, how do I stay in touch with that part of me? So I've been meditating for 40 years. I do yoga. I, I, I go on pilgrimages. I do different things to feed my soul so that I can stay in the center and, and bring the best of myself, be loving and kind and caring. Um, because I think when that happens, people's hearts open. Mm -hmm. And when people's hearts open, there's a connection that's undeniable. And for me, that's spirituality. Wow. Um, it's so funny because I, I, I'm just curious, anybody here respond? How many of you do are able to meditate? I know I should never say I can't anything. I don't believe in can't, but that's just not my thing. I have other things. But like yeah, but you know, meditation doesn't mean just uh, sitting and going om or, you know, trying to oh, quiet no, your no, mind, no, you know? Tell us what else it is. I'd love to be able to say. Oh, well, you can, you can, you can do it through moving meditations dance you can uh -huh. do it through walking meditations you can do it out in nature sitting by a tree and just connecting you can um you can do it by um some people um when they they walk for exercise and they play calming music which is a form of med of walking meditation for them. There's all kinds of different ones. Some people like to look at videos and stuff where there's quiet things and, and they can see quiet things or listen to quiet music. I think you find out what is it that helps you become still and, and become peaceful. Um, that, I think that is, I'm writing that down. I love that. What helps you become still? And I'm and I am reading some of these responses as we go, which is fan, they're fantastic. I can meditate. I cannot. I like to walk. I need more meditation in my life. I mean, it's just rowing can be meditative. Oh, Maggie. Yeah, Maggie. It is, and and be sitting by the water or swimming can be meditative. I really believe that some of the great swimmers and athletes find some kind of rhythm and meditate. And I have to tell you this. I went to see Eric Clapton the other night, right? Oh, and, lucky you, lucky you. Oh, it was incredible. But here's the thing. There's nobody that can tell me he doesn't meditate when he plays. Because what he does is he closes his eyes and he taps into something. And it's like the music is playing him. It, it, it was a spiritual experience for me because it was incredible to witness. To watch him. I know, right? Isn't that amazing? Um, I have to say, Karen, we're going to have to. She says, I have no quiet space. Everybody needs to. We need to help each other find quiet space. That's mm -hmm. so important. 
because I, I and I and listen, I know that because I have something downstairs that says "Be still and hear my voice." Um, mm. Because got to find that stillness. Speaking well, here's a question: Is is there no quiet place in her home? No, or- I don't know. I don't know, Karen. She can she can respond, and we can find that out. Yeah. And respond. And because here's the thing. If, if you haven't got a space in your home because there's too many people and there's too much stuff going on, you know, I used to find my quiet space when my kids were all over the place and everything, I, you know, I would walk or I would sit by the water or I would go and, and just be in nature. I would hike and be in nature. That became my quiet space. Right. Right. Um, you talk about going from welfare to the White House. <clears throat> what happened at the White House? Well, I was <laughs> I was married to um, Louis Gossett Jr. and um, he's an award-winning actor. And we were invited to the White House for um, Kennedy honors, and um, it was it was intimidating for me. I mean, you know, coming from where I came from, and I'm going to the White House, and I wasn't even sure how to act, right? And so I really um, I got someone to help me dress. Um, to talk to me about the etiquette in, 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 in eating and, and engaging with people. And one of the greatest gifts I was given was listen more than you talk. And so I got to meet some incredible people. I got to um, have amazing conversations. And, and it was the beginning of me starting to feel like I could fit anywhere. Really? And what gave you that feeling? Because I didn't, I didn't feel outside. I didn't feel like an outcast. I felt like I could be myself and people responded to it. And that my caring nature, my loving nature um, opened them up to talk to me. And so it, even though it was a huge arena, it felt very intimate. Yeah, it's what I, I I didn't realize it was the Kennedy Center because we've talked about this before. It's one of my, as Janine knows, it's one of my favorite, favorite shows of the year. I just think it's so extraordinary um, the way all of these artists come together and celebrate each other. It's, it's always just an outstanding production. And thinking about that, Sherry said she's ready to showcase you on. Okay. <laughs> and so um, let's take a look. You are incredible. You are magnificent. You are magic. And you live in a field of infinite possibilities. So today, this is the day. You get to claim your freedom. You get to claim your power. You get to stand in the magnificence that you came here to express. Welcome to Gen W. Listen, it's time for you to step into your power, to stand up, step out, dare to be seen, dare to be visible, dare to bring your voice, because everything in the universe is here to celebrate you, honor you, lift you. Dare to risk, dream big, because the truth is, (laughs) the world is waiting for you. Stop. (laughs) Thank you, everybody. (laughs) That was a memorable moment for all of us who got to be there for sure. No doubt about it. Um, We we always ask all of our guests, Cynthia, to share three kind of defining guiding principles. And uh, you were nice enough to do that as well. And so why don't we talk a little bit about when you you say, does my voice have does my voice matter? Mm-hmm. Here, are the t- here are some of the things you came up. The past does not define you. Tell us about that. Yeah. Listen, we've all been through stuff. You know, you can't have a human experience without going through ups and downs. You just can't. But the past doesn't define where you will go. And so wherever you came from, whatever you're going through, you get to decide in this moment I'm going to make a choice. I'm going to make a choice to do things differently. I'm going to make a choice to look at things differently. I'm going to make a choice to move in in a new direction. And so I tell people, I'm a miraculous unfolding because 
based on my past, I should not be living what I'm doing today. And I just had to get to a place where I understood that I can have tools and experiences and and make choices for myself that move me for away from the old patterns that used to define me. Yeah. Kind of like my summer experience, which still seems to be defining me. It's not a bad thing. It's just so, so interesting to me how certain experiences can get routinized in your brain and they're harder mm -hmm. to dispel than others where you just cast them off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and the, you know, and that's, that's really kind of about uh, attachment. We get attached to places and things that bring us comfort and so it's really hard when they change and things shift and things move you know because because now we're in a place of discomfort but I feel like that's a birthing zone it gets to birth us into new ways of being and new places and new experiences right if anybody wants to have any comments or any questions please do post them look beyond experience appearances okay yeah you know I happen to believe that the universe is for us. Mm -hmm. I happen to believe that we're here for a reason, that we matter. And so whatever experience you're having, whatever um, circumstance is occurring, if you can stand in the awareness that there's something working for you, that there's something here that's for an opportunity for your growth and your healing and your expansion. If you can do that, then you start looking beyond the, the momentary circumstance. And it and it's like I ask questions, you know, what what if this moment is answered prayer, what's next? What does my future self want me to know? How can I stand in the power and the presence that I came here? What is the message that wants to come through me that will support humanity? You, you start asking yourself questions that are from a positive point of view, as opposed to why is this happening to me? Why does this always happen to me? Right. And then the last one is tap into your intuitive knowing. Yeah, we are. We're, uh, we're encoded. We're encoded with extraordinary intuition and inner knowing and connectivity. And so the thing is, that's why I meditate. That's why I do yoga. That's why I do the, all those kinds of centering things. Because, the, the, you know, there's this statement, the still small voice. And I think that's what your intuition is. It's still and small. It doesn't scream or yell, but it does give you information and it happens in your body as well you can you can say I want to go do something and your body will kind of constrict in your heart or your stomach and it's like that's your intuition saying pause maybe you shouldn't do that think about this maybe this isn't the correct move for you I I, I get that I get that often and I've learned to really trust that as you trust your gut right mm -hmm. right and, and it, will, it, will, it will lead you in a hopefully in the in the right direction i think the times when i don't i'm usually i usually have some additional reflection on why i didn't listen right um just share if you wouldn't mind uh, an experience that you've had where you've wit witnessed this transform transformative power in somebody that you have been working with yeah there was a a woman in one of the classes that i was teaching and she stood up and she said I have a dream. And I said, okay, what is it? She said, I want to, I want to have a spa that's different. I want to have a spa where people can come and, and heal and, and, and go to center. And I said, that's a great event. She goes, well, the only thing is I know nothing about spas and I have no money. And I'm like, okay, well, let's just hold the vision. Right. And, and, Unfortunately, like a year later, her husband got really ill and he passed away, but he left her financially very secure. And so she came into my office and she said, okay, I'm driving down this street and on this corner, I see this place and I hear inside of myself, this is your spa. And I said, really? She said, yeah. She said, and it used to be a, a house, a convent or something for none. She says, but it's beautiful. So I bought it. Well, I got to tell you, watching this woman 
just take one step in front of the other, the next step, the next step. She went to places, she hired people who were spa experts. She did all of this stuff. Today, there she has this spa. It's called Five Wellbeing um, Spa and, and Wellness Center. It, it's in Littleton, Colorado. It's spectacular and it's like no other spa I've ever been to. So it was like this vision that was coming through her that made no sense to her. It just kept unfolding. And so I, I'm in, in awe and inspired by her because she continues to bring in new things that will support people's health and well-being. Well, and that's what you do with your books as well, right? Cynthia, you have three now. You're mo- and I was at your book. That's how I first met you. I went to your book launch, right? Does that matter? Um, Is there another one on the horizon? Well, actually, there's five. (laughs) There's there's what will set you free. There's um, revealing your extraordinary essence. There's you are loved, which is a children's book. There's I choose me, um, the art of being a phenomenally successful woman at home and at work. And my last one is does my voice matter? I don't know. I have I have a podcast called Women Awakening, and I I've been thinking about doing some kind of book about women awakening because I think our energy on the planet is necessary. Do you think? What do you mean? Do you think? We know. Come on, this is something we know. All of our energy on the planet is necessary, but you know we all should have access to equal volume. Don't you think? Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. And the thing is, is that you know, um, Brenda just put in there. You know, how do I move beyond fear? I just want to say, fear is just an energy, and and it's an energy that can hijack you because it's because it's based on um, the past and and things that you are concerned will not move you forward. Mm-hmm. But what you can do is start putting your attention on what you want, not on what you don't want. Right. And it's interesting how we let our minds slip back a little bit. I, 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 Brenda, thanks for uh, bringing that up, not only on behalf of yourself, but on behalf of all of us. It's a, it's a courageous question to admit mm-hmm. that we are fearful um, and also to be able to move forward from it. So that, thank you, Cynthia, for that. Anybody else have any other questions? Because um, I want to go back to this fifth book. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you to write this book. I want you to have the vision of this book, Cynthia. I think it's important. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, what I've been doing is I, what I do with every book is I kind of meditate on it for a while and I journal Mm -hmm. and I see what wants to come through and um, um, does my voice matter came in over a couple of years and, um, and then it all kind of dropped in all at once. So um, women are a passion for me and supporting women are a passion for me. So whatever this is, I'm sure it will be something that will support women. Uh Yeah, your positivity is so infectious. I have to tell you, that's why I think why we all really do enjoy being around you. Who is that for you, Cynthia? Who is that positive light teacher, mentor? Is it one person? Is it several people? Is it a community Uh, that you choose to live in? It's a couple people. One is um, um, Iyanla Van Zant is is one of the people. She's she's always reinventing herself and doing new things. Lisa Nichols is another one. I I studied with her for a while when I was building my business, and and um, and she's always like step into the field of possibilities. And then um, Reverend Michael Beckwith it was my minister when I grew when I was you know growing up spiritually and he's always saying ask ask for what you want step into the possibilities and open to what the universe has for you so I think all three of those people and you know and I would say Oprah's another one and in fact if you look at Oprah now you know everything she's doing is about possibility (laughs) right absolutely absolutely and Sunil wants to know how do you work with people whose energies don't align with yours another great question yeah well okay (laughs) so now let me just say this those people that don't align with you are your great teachers they come in to uh to help you understand what may be going on inside of you that needs transformation or healing 
and and to help you move out of judgment and separation and and so that you are putting your attention on the gifts you bring i mean i've had a couple of those people in my life and when i look back all they both have been you know great teachers for me because they were they were triggering something inside of me that needed to be seen and healed wow that's interesting well cynthia this has been great really wonderful i always take notes as i told you before we start and I, I, I pulled out two. One just happened, this whole idea, people who don't align with you are your great teachers. Mm-hmm. And you know what? In a, in a time where we live with such incredibly tense civil discourse, if we can look at each other as teachers as opposed to adversaries at times, I think that would be beneficial. And the other one was, what helps you be still? And again, bringing it back to a world that's so noisy, um, right? How we are to find that quiet place. And yes, Kristen, not Karen, got you. Um, that would be great. So Neil, from the bottom of your heart, and she thanks you. And that's so nice. I'm so oh. glad. I'm so, so happy for that. Um, you know, what we talk about, though, is how we impact others. And there's so many ways to create impact. And what I'd like to do to now, right now is invite anyone who has this opportunity. But here at Generation W, we have a program called Generation Wow. It's our Teen Girls Leadership and Mentorship Program. We will be hosting two events coming up shortly. October 19th, we expect between 500 to 600 girls and a couple of hundred mentors in Orlando, Florida. And then November 7th, we come back for our 11th year of working with the community here in Jacksonville, Florida. And we expect probably around the same, over 500, 600 young women, and we're recruiting mentors. So if anyone here has the ability or desire to volunteer, raise your hand, tap into the young girl heart, if you have, uh, and all of us have that, even the men on this call, I'm just telling you that I said it to my husband and boys often, uh, and you have a chance to be a guiding spirit for our next generation and really touch into some of the themes we talked about today in terms of visions and dreams and, and transformation. It's really, really powerful and very, very rewarding. We will be back on October 4th. It's rec- uh, in recognition of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, we are so fortunate to have met this amazing researcher and doctor, Dr. Aladeiru from the Mayo Clinic. Her story, I mean, honestly, she's one of your transformational stories, um, Cynthia. Where she came from, how she found her calling, what she even does today beyond her, her practice. She's a pioneering researcher in radiation, radiation oncology, and she has a commitment to equal healthcare access for underserved populations. How that manifests in our life and impacts us is really remarkable. I'm going to tell you, you don't want to miss hearing from and learning and communicating. I mean, what's so great about this, we give you the opportunity to ask questions for these, from these remarkable guests October 4th at noon. And if you have any questions at all, really connect with us at Generation W, GenWNow.com. We would love to hear from you. So until we see you October 4th, or if you're with us in between, let's once again, thank you, Cynthia James, for being such a guiding light in our life, a continued contributing member of Generation W. If anyone has questions that they would like us to forward to Cynthia, we will. We'll be looking forward to the fifth, the sixth book, but in the meantime, we'll pick up the other five. How's that? (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) All right. Thanks all who have joined us here and on Facebook, and we'll see us in our, our reruns. Actually, we put this in the archive and a lot of people come and find you. Have a, have a really great week, everyone. Thanks for joining us. God bless.